Hey guys, what's up? So uh, I've decided to do a reaction video today and I'm doing it on a channel called Paul and Morgan and their video is called The Problem with Progressive Christianity. This immediately sparked some uh, inner anger and rage. <laughs> it is probably equivalent to a girl defined video, girl defined channel. Uh, the last time I made a Christian video, people told me that I sounded angry uh, or just bitter. And it's like, yeah, fuck yeah, I'm angry and I'm bitter and I don't care and I have a reason. <laughs> if you don't know me, I came from background of uh, Christianity, so it's basically like born into it. Uh, Christian school, church every Sunday, got married at 21, I was a virgin bride, and that sounds weird probably if you don't know my story. I'm also trans, so I transitioned from female to male. Uh, I started coming out probably about the age of 25, and it was a really long, shameful journey. <laughs> Lots of shame to shake because of my religious background and the way that I, it was taught to me. So progressive Christianity actually kind of saved me in the fact that it helped me um, be okay with who I was and I still felt like I could be a Christian and like uh, that God still loved me, that I wasn't going to hell for who I was and, and things like that. Um, so I'm really thankful for the part that it played in my life and for those Christians out there that were accepting of me or who are accepting of me and uh, yeah, it means a lot to me. I love those people who still accept me even throughout my transition and stuff like that. So this immediately just was like, okay, I need to, I probably will have some words on this. Uh, so this is the video that I am reacting to. And also like, I'm not really sure where I'm at in my spiritual journey. I've talked about it previously, uh, but uh, yeah, let's, let's start here. Let's do this. All right, guys, what's going on? Progressive Christianity and the dangers thereof. That's what we're talking about today. It's gonna to be very serious. <laughs> As you can tell, he's got a serious look on. That hurt. Oh, it was a fake mustache. Oh, it was a fake mustache. No shit, Sherlock. What's going on, you guys? I'm Paul. I'm Morgan. I'm Michael. This is the, the Paul, Paul and Morgan, Morgan, the Paul, Paul and Morgan show. show. I don't know if I can do this, guys. <laughs> okay. So, so today's video, we're talking about the problems that we see with progressive Christianity. It seems like it's been really kind of in our faces recently. And I'm not saying that in a mean way, but it just feels like it's been a, a big topic of conversation. Yeah, people evolve. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. We, um, <laughs> well, let me, uh, it has been. It's been problematic. So we thought, let's go ahead and make a video about it. And who better to have with us than the man, the myth, the legend. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba no introduction needed. Why are Christians so cringy? <laughs> like, could they bring that down a little bit? I just, ugh. Can I just start by saying, we need to have heart postures that say, God, we desire to live for you and not for ourselves. And I think a good part, a good slug of the Christian progressive movement is how can I satisfy my emotions, my flesh, my wants and desires. I don't like being told no. I feel like he just wants to rip his shirt off. He's just like, feel the, I want to live for you, God. Uh, it's, it's there. It's, yeah. His shirt is, I don't know if that's, uh, is, is that very Christian of him? It's very immodest. Or is it only for the girls? Is that how it works? And then still fit that idea into some type of Christian bubble that says, but I still love Jesus. And I'm still gonna get to heaven when I die. It says in 2 Timothy 4, 3, for the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers, teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. So when he says in the Bible, that committing adultery and sexual immorality, when he lays out a very specific mandate in scripture. So, and now we know that this whole video is about being gay and uh you know of course like they say that this is something that we shouldn't be doing because because you know it just because something feels good and it brings joy it's like i don't know like being trans doesn't bring me joy being myself brings me joy uh beforehand I didn't give a flying fuck about life, so it's kind of like, what kind of God would truly want to prevent me from actually wanting to keep living, you know? So there's sometimes, like, the the concept of Christianity of basically, like, anything good 
is bad and you should suppress absolutely everything. Did they not think that at some point on this earth that this was going to backfire with the rest of humanity? Uh, there's only so much that you can suppress and shit starts hitting the fan. Why would God who loves me prevent me from doing something that I really enjoy that satisfies me? There's a difference between being satisfied and feeling like you can be yourself. There's a big difference there. It's just like, drugs feel good. That doesn't mean it's okay to just do drugs all the time. But drugs don't make you who you truly are. Being who you truly are makes you who you truly are. Oh, fuck, I don't know. Michael, I'm glad you mentioned, you know, the sexual immorality aspect. Because glad you mentioned the sexual immorality aspect because we actually plan to talk about that this whole video anyways. I do think that is one of the issues that's on the forefront here. When I see someone saying I'm a very big advocate for progressive Christianity. What I see pretty quickly after that is the person is living a lifestyle that the Bible would call sexual immorality. They're gay. <laughs> uh, they think that they're so sly, but it's, uh, just say it. Like if you're gonna be against progressive Christianity, just like grow some balls and say what you mean. Don't tiptoe around the issue at hand. They're saying God told me that this is okay, or they may be saying that the Bible is outdated in this area. I've heard that. First Thessalonians. The Bible is outdated in a lot of areas. <laughs> you know God and you're submitting to him. Repent. We know he likes to submit. Mm -hmm. Saying I can be sexually deviant from what the word says and I still love God and I'm still living for God. It doesn't line up. There are verse after verse after verse that make clear what sexual immorality is. <laughs> it makes it clear. We're just talking about gay people again because that's all we really do. It says in the Bible that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Bible's not outdated. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, it's not outdated at all. It was only written thousands of years ago. It's been translated so many times into different languages. It's definitely not, it's not outdated. Mm -mm. The word of God, it doesn't change from season to season. It doesn't change from season to season. We can't even keep a fucking iPhone for a year without needing like a new iPhone because everything changes constantly. And you all, we can try to like mince words here. Jesus Christ does not mince words. He loves you, but he wants to transform you. He loves you, but he loves you, but there's always a but after. Uh, Christians love that but. Mm -hmm. It's like Jesus loves you, but it, God loves you, but but he wants to send you to hell also for being yourself or actually enjoying your life. Uh, he loves you, but he will also judge you, but he's also jealous and whatever. The wording that Paul uses is God abandons you to your sin. Wow. <laughs> that is the God that I want to believe in. He will abandon you. Uh, that could be why I have abandonment issues. This sounds great. Uh, sign me up. I'm so done with progressive Christianity. Guys, the reason we keep bringing up sexual immorality is it's because we're talking about gay people. Uh, that's what we like to talk about because we're obsessed. And, and people are always like, why do you only focus on this? Or why are you only talking about sexual immorality when there's so many other sins in the Bible? It's very true. I think one of the main reasons we're talking specifically on this is because it is so, it's such a hot topic right now. It is such a common thing you see everywhere. <laughs> I love how like she's talking about how common it is and like <laughs> Paul's just over here like not me. Common thing you see everywhere. Conversion therapy you know it works it worked for me like about 50% of the time. It is one of the biggest things progressive Christians are promoting and saying that it's okay to live in this sin of sexual immorality. And we're here to say, the Bible does not say that that's okay. So why are Christians, why are people who are claiming to be Christians saying that it's okay? Because people are human and people actually care about other <laughs> humans. And uh, you know what? The Bible, even though you might not think so, is outdated. And I honestly, uh, I think it is, kind of more like the evolution of man's consciousness. And they didn't know shit about how the earth worked when it was written. They didn't, like they've never left the earth. They didn't even know the earth was round. Like they only had like a certain knowledge about maybe like a 
20 mile radius of where they were at like you can only walk so far or ride a camel so far or a fucking donkey um the knowledge at the time of the written word of god was so so small so why are we putting so much weight into it still and how do we know that moses wasn't just tripping on mushrooms when he's talking about some like fucking burning bush and they writing it down like it was god talking to him like doesn't that not sound like a trip it could have been a trip and we're putting like so much weight in the truth to these <laughs> random ass bible stories yeah i think the idea of progressive christianity is so appealing and so warm and fuzzy at first because there is no conviction there is no condemnation there is total acceptance of your sin oh you want this even though it's not in the bible even though god clearly says no to this hey it's okay god loves you anyway sounds horrible i don't <laughs> Who would want progressive Christian? It's dangerous. Danger, for sure. He's going to accept you no matter what. God is loving. He is beautiful. He is kind. He is forgiving. He is filled with grace and forgiveness. But... But, there it is again. The but. Also, he makes it very clear. If you read the book of Revelations, when God comes back, there is going to be a line drawn in the sand. And accepting your sin as a full-on lifestyle is one of those things that's gonna put you in the not good side of the sand. I'm here for that not good side of the sand. We just need to have a level of sobriety here, you all. Like, Morgan's not trying to fear you into accepting Christ. She's trying to instill, like, a level of sobriety and seriousness of the situation we're in right now. Jesus came to give us life and life abundantly. He came to deliver us. He came to set up. <laughs> I love how we're talking about sexual immorality, and then he's just talking about Jesus coming all the time. Yeah. That's free. If you just said, I've come to set the captives free, to, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. We don't have to live in sexual sin, okay? There is freedom. And the three of us sitting here right now, we are not coming at you like saying that we're perfect. We have it all figured out. We have all three struggled with sin in our life. Uh, yeah, I noticed that she has tattoos. So would that be also considered a sin? Because technically, you're not supposed to get tattoos if you're uh, a true Christian. I'm working through sin in my life, giving it to the Lord and saying, God, just flush it out of me, rip it out of me. Do God, remove my tattoos. <laughs> the freedom in Christ is so beautiful. And we just want to see everyone walking in that power, in that freedom. And the lie that progressive Christianity is freedom, it's sad. I would beg to differ. I, I think that there is absolutely zero freedom uh, in, you know, Christianity that they're talking about versus the progressive Christianity, which is be yourself. God loves you anyways. I, I don't see where the restriction is in that. Uh, I've never felt more free outside of the bounds of, you know, the Christianity that I grew up with. I was miserable and I'm angry. I'm still carrying around shame because I feel like it prevented me from actually living half of my life. So there's that. I think one of the big reasons that progressive Christianity is growing so big is a lack of knowledge and submission to the word of God. And I would encourage you guys, if you find yourselves like, I don't know what I believe, maybe progressive Christianity, maybe these things being told to me by culture or even people around me, even some churches. There are teachers and people and influencers now and there will continue. So here's another thing with Christianity. Uh, they're so like passive aggressive. They're trying to tiptoe around the whole like gay people are sinning thing to now she's talking about influencers, people. She's talking about God is great. Like just fucking say it. God is, God is great is like a progressive Christianity channel. She's pretty cool. I'm gonna link her down below. I, like what she says it, I'm way more likely to get on board with than uh, Morgan here. And it just bugs me that they aren't straightforward. Just tell us who you're talking about. We know. Tell us who you're talking Like, ugh. Christians are so passive aggressive. It like drives me insane. And it's like backstabbing and judgment and just makes me want to be a Christian. That's for sure. Life is not easy being a Christian. It's not easy. It was never promised to be easy. But what was promised was this never-ending joy. 
never-ending joy. Uh, I know I was filled with joy when I was a Christian, for sure. Like, life was... Whew, everything brought me joy. No. In any circumstance you are in, in the end of this life, we have something so much better promised to us than any joy or happiness that this world could bring you. So that's my biggest thing uh, when it comes to Christianity. My, my most... Ugh, what irks me the most is that Christians tend to basically act like this life doesn't matter and that heaven is guaranteed to, guaranteed to them and everything they do, they are building up their heaven points, basically. So then I got a question, like, are you even a good person or are you just doing this because you think it's going to get you into heaven? Uh, also, you're not promised anything. There is no proof. Uh, there is no proof that there is heaven. And so you could be wasting your life away right now just, you know, living according to this ancient book that you have uh, and then die and then be like, well, shit, like that was it? Uh, damn, like you could waste your whole life with, without even knowing it uh you know <laughs> that was like one of the things that i had to do when i started coming out is i had to like throw christianity away completely because i was just like what if there is no god what if there is no heaven i had to separate myself so i could like if there isn't i need to live my life right now this is what is important we are not guaranteed tomorrow we are not guaranteed heaven hell later today Th this moment matters and this moment matters uh, in that we should just be good people to be good people and not because we're gonna get something later in life so when Christians are like we're promised heaven it's like no you're not you are not it is not guaranteed like get your shit together live your life right now this is what actually pushes people away from Christianity more than anything Anyways, that is it for today. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or if you want to catch more videos, don't forget to subscribe. Peace out, guys. I will see you next time.